since it's Mother's Day, I should probably say a little bit about my mom. She was just a sweet little old Alabama Southern lady, about two, three inches bigger than me, and had eight children. Eight children. By the time I was maybe 32, it occurred to me that if I was my mama, I'd have six by now. And if anybody's grown up in a big Catholic family, then you know about call and roll. Where she's trying to talk to one of you, but instead it's Terry, Donna, Barbara, Jeannie, Johnny, Chuck, J uh, Barbara, uh, Donna, uh, J which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we survived that. But uh, I am a native Atlantan, which is very rare. And uh, yeah, there aren't very many of us. So, uh, But people tell me I don't sound like I'm from here. Although, to me, this is a southern accent. My dad was from the Midwest, and I was in broadcasting for a while, so, you know, it wears off a little bit, but I can have a southern accent sometimes when we talk about magnolias and camellias floating down the stream and the perfume of the gardenias, because you know where I learned to talk this way? The movies. Because <laughs> that is not a real southern accent, but whoever trains people to have southern accents in TV or in movies teaches them to talk like that, which is ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Um, if y'all ever watched uh, The Closer, which was a detective show, probably went off the air about 10 years ago. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Kira Sedgwick did the, uh, was the main character. And she's from New England, and her regular accent sounded better than her Sandy Springs accent. Because she would say things like, Lieutenant Provenza, come on into my office right this very second. Oh, but Lieutenant, I need you to wait while I give my dear cat Joe well his uh, shot, his little shot. So she had a pretty much a four to one drawl to syllable ratio. So. <laughs> No, oh, no, I just really got on my nerves. Very, very, very badly. Um, but I, I gotta say, I'm happy to be here at the Arts Fest. I love Decatur. It's such a great, inclusive community, but I can also look around and see, at any given time, four or five people who look like me, although most of me are taller. <laughs> but, uh, you know the old show, are you, are you smarter than a fifth grader? And no, uh, I would be, for me, it would be, are you taller than a fifth grader? And the answer would have to be no. <laughs> but um, back to Decatur accents. One of my friends who did a uh, who edited a magazine interviewed Kira Sedgwick, and she said, "Your accent is so spot on." I'm like, "Spot on for Cairo or Berlin or some other badly pronounced small southern Georgia town?" Because <laughs> no, it is not. But we live in Yollywood here on this very courthouse square. We have had zombies. We have had rom-coms, we have had superheroes, and not one of them with a decent southern accent. So hopefully at some point, maybe we can get some directors from Georgia up there who won't uh, teach people to be so awful. And now I wonder if reality TV is any better, but I kind of doubt it. Like we were talking about earlier, I watched, uh, used, used to watch uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, but kind of lost my taste for it after a while, but there was this very memorable episode where a housewife's son was dropped out of school, didn't have jobs, staying up late promoting events, um, and Lord only knows what he was doing. So she sat him down and she said, okay, now, if you're going to keep living here, you got to get a job, you got to do this, you got to do that, you know, pretty good mother stuff. And then the next scene is a half a dozen stylists coming in to give this guy a haircut. So I'm thinking, well, it's a nice haircut, like, you know, braids kind of close to the head, looking pretty sharp, but is that a punishment? So when did a haircut become a punishment? So if the criminal justice system, like in the old, the new courthouse behind me, were to come up with a uh, haircut as a penalty, the prosecutor could come up and say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and the judge, please sentence this person to the most egregious penalty possible, a faux hawk with powder pink hair and pink tips. Powder blue hair and pink tips, come to think of it. And someone would say, a mohawk, and he would say, no, a faux hawk, a mohawk is too good for him. 
And then the defense attorney would get up and say, oh no, the video is purely circumstantial evidence. There's no proof that that could have possibly been my client in any way, shape, or form. And please, if you must get to the sentencing phase, do nothing more serious than a fashionable fade. Oh. And space puffs for his accomplice, which are like kind of like that kind of fizzy princess Leia thing. So, because you know, if you live in Decatur, you kind of have opinions about Buckhead, about Dunwoody, you know, about all these other places. And I, I really like Decatur, but if I did live in Buckhead, you want to see what my Buckhead face would look like? <laughs> <laughs> it costs so much money to look this delighted all the time. <laughs> but if I did have enough money to live in Buckhead, I think I probably would be this delighted all the time. <laughs> but seriously, the filler alone to buy you a condo on ponds. <laughs> I had a friend in Florida who was, uh, he worked for a sail company, which was really pretty cool. He would go on racing yachts with these big, you know, high powered people who would race in the America's Cup and do regattas all over the world. And he would teach these people to use their sails and to go on, you know, and to make the best of this product. So he, since he worked for the sail company, and he'd tell these great stories. And every now and then he would just stop and he'd say, what long was I telling him? And he would ask me like I knew the answer to that. Like, are you just telling so many lies you've totally forgotten? But some of his stories were great. Like he'd be at a beach party with a bunch of rich, powerful Central American or South American people. And then somebody would ring the doorbell and somebody would say, oh, it's the president. And they all go, ugh. It wasn't the president of their uh, country. I think it was like the country next door or something like that. But you would think having a president come to your beach party would be pretty cool. But unfortunately, the, the, he said, well, why do y'all hate the president? And they said, because he always wants to bring his machine gun. And he wants to go, he shoots it off on the beach and the dogs bark and he scares the kids. And what line was I telling? So anyway, got him out of a lot of uh, interesting situations, but I never knew how to answer that because I guess I was supposed to have some sort of reply to it. And I think now I would just say, you'd say, what lie was I telling? I'd say, why, are you in Congress? <laughs> but not everybody in Congress is a liar. There's some really great public servants, but there are a few others, and they know who they are. So, anyway, thank you all for coming, and I'm going to finish this off with a song, because we had a really, uh, we got through the pandemic. We did pretty good. And uh, I know, actually know more people who have COVID now than before, but not a one of them's been in the hospital. So I'm very, very happy Ooh. about that. So. <laughs> yep. Show my ukulele shirt too. <laughs> the fancy dishes wear the best clothes indulge your cheapest wishes sing too loud speak your mind you only live once no one's left behind yo yolo yo yolo yo yolo yo yolo yo yo yolo yo yo yolo yo yolo yo yolo yo yolo yo yolo zip down that line Empty that bucket you're on Borrowed time So get a ukulele and pluck it YOLO 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 Now, this is the audience participation part uh, when I nod at you, say or sing or holler, YOLO. I'll sing high and you sing low, and together we'll say YOLO. Mm -hmm. I'll sing high and you sing low, and together we'll say YOLO. I'll sing high, you sing low, and together we'll say YOLO. Mm -hmm. I'll sing high and you'll sing low, and together we will say YOLO. Thank you.